Hi guys, it's Janet. I have Monica Okobu with me. I just want to make sure I said that right and I probably didn't. It's okay. Okubo, it was close enough. Okubo. So just dis, uh, describe your emotional state with current events right now. <sighs> probably like a roller coaster. It depends on the day um, between, you know, politics and COVID and all of that. Um, and I'm really, you know, trying to maintain optimism with all of it, because if you just take COVID alone, being an athletic trainer right now, with things changing, seem, it seems like every day with the science, with the policies, with state policies, um, you know, California just opened, uh, we were, they were classifying us by region and yesterday they went to classify us back by county. And so our outdoor dining opened up again. And then what does this mean? You know, the vaccines and how does that trickle down to us and being able to come back on campus because we haven't been able to be on campus since March, 2020. So um, just a roller coaster. And then with me trying to um, maintain, maintain some level of, of, of calm throughout it. So you're at a JUCO. Are there any conversations that you've been having with your student athletes about these current events? We haven't been back on campus. So I've been teaching remotely. So I'm the head athletic trainer at San Rosa Junior College, but also the pre-sports medicine program director for our students academically. I've only had contact with, therefore, our students. And normally our students also, um, the group of students that would be our interns. So we've had a lot of conversations with students that way. And then some are student athletes. And we actually polled our student athletes because a lot of our coaches, there's a few that are very realistic. There's a few that are, that are really pushing to get back on no matter what it takes. And there's some in the middle. And we wanted to take a pulse. I said, did anyone ask the athletes what they think about returning? And so this was in the late fall. And we took a poll of our student athletes and found that about 25% of them are pretty uncomfortable with coming back. Um, that was good to know. Um, and, but, but then you have 75, you know, the majority really wanting to come back. So I think the, the microcosm of, you know, of society that are our student athletes are, are pretty much that, a reflection of what's going on in the greater society and, and kind of how I feel, you know, some days, yeah, we have to get back. And then some days, oh, that's just crazy. You know, especially in California where our rates are so high and our, our numbers are really high. On diversity in athletic training, what has been frustrating and what has been exciting to you? Diversity in athletic training. I think the summer was a huge reflection point for many of us. And so what I think is exciting is the level of responsiveness that has, has been um, been seen by the NATA, by our regional, you know, our regions and our state, because at first it was very frustrating. So it started with me being frustrated. What are we doing regarding diversity? And then I was looking up numbers and it's, we're 80 something percent white in an NATA membership uh, survey from a couple years ago. And then looking at our California Athletic Trainers Association website and seeing that we don't have any uh, equity, diversity, inclusion committee. We don't have an LGBTQ plus, nothing like that. We had nothing. And I sat in a moment of disappointment and then I reached out and, and, and helped start and found a CATA, California Athletic Trainers Association Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Committee that hopefully um, can keep us on the right track and, and being, being more appropriately um, addressing issues of, of diversity, right? And so we, that we hope with that committee that I sit in, I'm not a non-voting member of the board, but I sit in there and whoever's chair in the future would be sitting in there and providing an equity lens on all things uh, CATA business. And I just think that, so from a moment of despair went through to, you know, really pushing and, and asking questions and trying not to be judgmental. And from that, really seeing just how open people are to, to addressing the issues and, and, to, and to, you know, to really listening to others and providing a, you know, a more equitable, equitable, diverse and inclusive environment, whether it's the CATA or 
Association and what I've been see, seeing going on at the NAT level has been awesome. So when you were putting this committee together, did you meet any resistance from other NAT members or the executive council or committee? No, they were very open. Uh, there was one president going out and one president coming in and both were on most of the emails. So when I brought up the idea, they wanted a little bit of a proposal to them and what the charge of the committee would be. And they wanted to see what other states were doing. And I did this, well, I did this research where I went through every single state website, state athletic training website, and found that 14 of the states did have some form of an EDI committee already. Um, and that was, you know, California being one of the most diverse, if not the most diverse states, you know, being able to come back with that information to them, they, it was really eye opening and they were really excited to, they were really excited that I agreed to be chair if they so, you know, voted. That was their first area of excitement. And so we're in the phase where we are, you know, taking interest from committee members and moving it forward. So it's still in these, this early, early, these early phases, but there was extreme support and, and the board was like, you know, look at our webpage. We know that we are mostly white and we really think that this is necessary and we seek your advice, you know, on this. And I talked to some other people that are more well-versed on EDI issues in our state and, and, and went forward with it. So it, it was amazing. It was well-received and really, really in a positive light. So has your race ever affected your career as an athletic trainer or when you were a student? Yeah, um, I don't think so. I think what sticks out to me is that I walked in at 27 years old to be the head athletic trainer in a community college with 500 student athletes, large, large community college in California. And they had only had one athletic trainer before who was a white male. For 37 years, they knew one person in charge and walking into that environment as a, as a female, as a queer female, as a, as a you know, half Japanese, you know, mixed race female, um, I felt like I needed to be cautious. And what I really felt was the pressure of being a, a young female was the barrier I had to overcome. Um, I did my master's thesis on gender stereotypes and female athletic trainers and found, you know, along the lines of, of other research uh, from, from others that, you know, you really have to prove yourself. You feel like you have to prove yourself as a female in the profession and, and you take on this role, like either you're kind of like the mom role or you're kind of like a sister role or you're like a lady, like don't spit in front of the ladies, like so there was a lot of that going on and also this real need, like I knew I had to be, I knew I was qualified and I knew I would, but I knew I was young and I still have so much to learn and grow in terms of leadership skills and things like that. But I knew that I had to go take leadership classes. I had to be on point with all of my skills and all of my knowledge and all of the current events because my communication skills, because I had to be better so that I wouldn't misrepresent any of those marginalized groups of which I represent, right? And I knew that I was walking in after a white male who was amazing, but he was a white male and I'm this young female, you know, non-white, not straight female going, ooh, I, I represent a lot more than myself and just feeling that weight and being challenged. Um, I remember our football coach at the time I was working a summer camp like I normally did, you know, right before, right after I got hired, but I hadn't started yet. And one of his athletes was in the, the football camp, the local football camp, and he hurt his knee. And so the coach said, can I bring him over? You know, can I bring him over? You tell me what you think. And like, I'm evaluating. And it's like, it didn't take um, a seasoned athletic trainer to know that his PCL was torn. It was just so clear. And I said, well, we'll check with the orthopedic. I'll get him referred. But it seems, you know, to me, my findings are that he, we need to rule out a, a PCL tear and get him into, into the orthopedic. And I remember, I'll never forget, he said, hmm, PCL tear, huh? How do you get one of those? How do you know? What test did you perform? And he just quizzed me. 
Like he's a football coach. I don't quiz you on why we just lost the football game because you called the wrong plays, right? Or because your player wasn't good enough or whatever, you know, and I don't judge him like that anyway, but you know, I don't do that to you. So I just felt like it was very uncomfortable. And then um, obviously I was so ecstatic when, you know, a couple of days later, the doctor called me and said, yep, I agree with you. And the MRI agrees with you. And that coach never questioned me again. So could that have happened to a male new in my position? Maybe, but I, you know, along with a lot of other experiences, I didn't feel like that was why it wasn't because I was new. I felt like it was because I was a young female. So in your practice, having student workers and interns coming through and the class that you take in athletic training, what do you look for in these students? What kind of characteristics or personalities or motivation? Mm -hmm. We actually have in our student handbook, we say, you know, these are the qualities we're looking for. And some of them are, you know, honesty and dedication, you know, all these things. But me personally, what my, my favorite students are the ones that want to learn. They're dependable. They uh, communicate well. And they just, you know, they're just good people. And they might not know that where they want to go in sports medicine, or if they might just flip and, and go become a police officer. It's just to work with people that just want to learn. They want to be helpful. Um, they want to push me to be better. Um, and I learn from them just as much as they learn from me. It's like, those are my favorite students. They're just, you know, we're both on the same page and we can work really well together. And, and those type of students tend to work really well with the student athletes and with the coaches and with the rest of the staff as well. Looking into the profession of athletic training the next couple of years, what do you think some of the biggest issues the profession is going to face? Hmm. Probably the, the biggest issues that the profession will face, I think there will be, you know, amongst the other issues that they're currently, you know, the, the idea, the areas of specializing and um, fellowships and the change to the masters, you know, those continued efforts, um, expanding our workplace options, right, all those things I think will continue. And I think that it will never stop that we always have to educate people about what athletic trainers are, what we do, and our advocacy is probably, some may argue that it's our number one and has always been our number one challenge. Um, I think that, that it's a really good thing that I hope the largest challenge is to undo, you know, over 400 years of not addressing diversity issues and and in our profession, especially, I don't want that momentum to stop. It already feels a little bit like it's slowing and, and I'm gonna be one of those people that is gonna to continue to remind people that it took us centuries to get here. And for our profession, it's took decades to get here. And as a young profession still, we have a lot of work to do to diversify and, and, and just do that work. And it's just athletic training, athletic trainers are, the, are some of the most amazing people. I really believe that. And so I think we can do it. I think that we can all come together and have these conversations and, and push forward these initiatives and really work as a team to come together with our different views and really be more diverse, enhance equity for our future athletic trainers and for our current students. Um, so I think, I think that the future of athletic training is bright and I think the challenges, I think we're ready, you know, as a, as a, as a unit to take all those things on. On a lighter note, tell me about an embarrassing moment you've had as an athletic trainer. It's probably a lot, but the, the biggest one that sticks out for me is embarrassing and painful. Um, the foot, a head football coach and I, a couple years ago, were standing in between the two practice fields. The red shirts were getting ready for the end of the year red shirt. They played each they play each other at the end of every year to provide something fun for them since they work hard all year and they never really get to play. So they were practicing behind us. And then our, you know, the the starters, the 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 players on the active roster are are practicing in front of us. And we were talking about a player or something. And then all of a sudden it was like, watch out. And I look to just see this, this, I don't, I don't even know, but one of our largest, most muscular players uh, from the red shirt side 
he's, I'm looking this way and he's behind me coming this way because someone threw the pass to almost drop on my head. You know, it's the red shirts, not very good aim because we're literally 10 yards off the field that they were playing on. And that ball just, you know, is coming at me. And he just, before I knew it, he's looking at the ball. He doesn't see me in the coach. The coach stepped sideways, but he was coming for me anyway. I try to step sideways and he just plowed through me. And so there I am flying in the air, it felt like. And he grabs me while he's trying to spin his legs because he knows he hit me. And he's like holding me up and my legs are going and his legs are going. And then he sets me down and I stop and look back because I think my liver is back there still because it just felt like all my organs stayed and I just my skeleton moved or something and I was like I'm fine I'm fine it's totally fine and the coach is like you sure you're fine that's that's a pretty uh fast moving solid dude and um yeah so then practice ends a few minutes later and I remember being in my office going by myself going I am not fine and so I had a pretty decent concussion um that was it's just embarrassing when you do a bunch of concussion education and you deal with concussions every day. And then you have to, you know, the next day, you know, I'm the worst patient and the athletes like sitting in my office and why are you wearing sunglasses right now? You know, why do you have a concussion? You know, one of our concussed athletes is asking me that. So that was pretty embarrassing and why I love at the same time working with our student athletes, because they're just, they're just awesome. They're going to call you, call it, call it how they see it. And uh, even if it's embarrassing, all right, Monica, next couple of minutes for you, your closing statement. Closing statement? Um, on what topic? Anything you want to talk about. In general. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to participate here because it's nice to have, to have you reaching out to so many people from so many different backgrounds to talk about uncomfortable issues like, like equity and diversity and what's it, what's it like to be an athletic trainer, be a female, or be an athletic trainer and be a uh, mixed race, um, to be a queer athletic trainer. What does that feel like? You know, and so I think it's really important to have these discussions. And and one of the, the best lines I've heard, you know, in all this equity work everybody's trying to engage in is, you know, we have to get uncomfortable to make progress in these areas. And so as uncomfortable as I was when I received the invitation, I feel like it's so important um, because if if anything, you know, I've shared today, help somebody else move forward. I am so fortunate that your question about have you ever been judged on your race or felt like you're being judged on your race? I probably was, you know, where I do feel like I was judged on my race was when I got hired. I feel like they just lit up at the fact that I was a young female and I was not white, you know, in a predominantly white college. I really feel, um, I know I was qualified and I know I deserve to get the job. At the same time though, I really, I, I, I'm nervous. I've always been nervous that that took part, in, you know, took a part in the hiring decision. Well, look, this person's diverse, and these other people might not be. So that is where, where I worry that that it was there, but it's never been like proven to me. Um, and then I just move forward. We all just keep trudging forward, and luckily into a career that I've had so far that I haven't felt judged on, in particular my race. So. So I think, you know, again, I'm in Northern California, so it's probably different for most, uh, but we, you know, we're in Northern California and there's a lot of my black colleagues, there, there are not many um, because it's an uncomfortable environment because our hiring policies are poor. Um, so that's what, you know, I just became, um, I just was voted a vice president of our academic Senate and I'm proud to just push equity into everything that we're doing at the college because I think it's so important and it's so important to have these conversations and within academic Senate, you know, hey, we're all gonna need to be uncomfortable. So I hope that with all these interviews, it makes people uncomfortable, but it moves us forward. Monica, thank you so much for your time and I'll talk to you soon. All right, thank you for having me.